The fisherman was shaking with rage. Security around Japan's secret slaughter of the dolphins had been breached, and our presence was met by threats and intimidation. What is the problem? <laughs> Carving up the slaughtered dolphins behind the tarpaulins was a bloody task the fishermen had wanted to keep secret, and they reacted with fury at the sight of our camera. And this is what they don't want you to see. These pictures taken by campaigners in previous seasons show part of the largest annual slaughter of dolphins in the world. Most Japanese fishermen see nothing wrong in this and say dolphins should be treated like any other fish. Along the coast, the picture postcard fishing town of Taiji lies at the very heart of an industry that butchers 23,000 dolphins and porpoises every year. And here they are determined that their work is kept out of sight. The operation has now been moved to a hidden cove where the killing is carried out in secret. With the last remaining dolphins penned in, waiting to be driven toward the cove, it was the turn of a group of young surfers from the US and Australia to take to the water to do what they could to stop the fishermen and draw attention to the slaughter. This was a dramatic and potentially life-threatening confrontation between the young surfers on their boards and the angry fishermen. Using the boat's propellers to block their course and flailing boat hooks to physically prevent the surfers from reaching the pod of terrified dolphins. It could have only one outcome. The surfers from the Save the Dolphin campaign were eventually driven back, forced to return ashore. They managed to escape in their van before the police arrived. Veteran Save the Dolphin campaigner Rick O'Barry has his face covered, keeping a low profile. The police also want to talk to him, and it wasn't long before he picked up a tail. The police here are sympathetic to the fishermen, whose livelihoods depend on the dolphin hunts. And here's the slaughterhouse right here. You see how they're covering it up? It's hard to believe that this is taking place uh, in this time and age. It is so brutal, so cruel, and you wonder why the world isn't doing something to stop this. Within minutes, our car was surrounded by national police. Sky News. Rick was off to the station for questioning. Peter Sharp from Sky News. Hi, hi, Dave. We caught up with the surfers on the road to Osaka. How are you all feeling? Among them, Hayden Panettiere, star of the TV series Heroes. She and her friends devastated they couldn't have done more to save the dolphins. I wish I was under the water with a rebreather and a tank on, snipping, snipping all these, snipping all these nets, and you know, you know what I mean? I mean, if you saw, the, uh, there's one point where, I mean, they were literally spy hopping, which is when they jump out of the water, they, they stick their head up out of the water and they can look around and see around them and just baby stuck its head out and kind of looked at us and mm. just, the thought that that baby's no longer with us is very difficult. These are the last surviving mammals of today's kill. But the Japanese fishermen will be back soon to complete the slaughter. Inside the killing cove, the sea ran red, with the blood of the 40 dolphins packed and dispatched under the green tarpaulin. And for those who tried and failed to stop the killing, a quiet determination to return to these shores again and finally end this slaughter. Thank you very, very much. Peter Sharp, Sky News at Taichi in Japan.